Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at another short Latin story. Now this one is called Spartan Brevity, and it comes from George L. Bennett's Easy Latin Stories from Beginners. So like I always tell you, whenever we dive into these stories, um, what Bennett is calls, calling Easy Latin Stories for Beginners are not necessarily what I would. Um, depending on what level of Latin you're in, I would say that they might not necessarily be easy and they might not be for beginners, right? So if you're a student, I would say these are probably pretty well suited for a Latin 2 range, somewhere in there, and it kind of depends on what you've learned and what career curriculum you're using. But I would say if it's your first year of learning Latin, you're probably not going to recognize a lot of the stuff in Bennett. Um, so it'll probably fall into that uh, second, maybe third, I mean, depending on what you do, um, type of range. But these are a really great way, like I always tell you, to expand beyond your traditional um, textbook or curriculum. Just read something different. They're filled with a lot of um, mythology, history, sort of morals or, or fables, things like that. Um, and this one kind of falls into the realm of, I guess, history, right? It's something from Plutarch, um, talking about the Spartans. Um, but again, they're, they're short, they're pretty um, straightforward. And again, if you're at the right level of Latin, they're not too, too bad to understand. So I give them a whirl, right? And, and you know, just use it as a chance to break out from, uh, from your traditional textbook. OK, so like I said, in this video, we're going to be um, reading a story about the Spartans. So everyone tends to know about their military prowess, right? That's something a lot of people know. This picture is the Battle of Thermopylae, by the way, which a lot of people have heard of. But they're also very famous for being um, concise with their words. So this gives us the word laconic, right, which is named after Laconia, the region um, in which the Spartans live, which is why they have the Greek lambda, the L on their shields, right? So being laconic means you're kind of um, short and sweet, right, brief in your words. And that's what this story is all about. Just for an example example, um, one of the, the most famous laconic phrases that I, I tend to enjoy um, talks about King Philip of Macedon, right, um, when he becomes so frustrated uh, with the Spartans and he threatens them by saying, if I invade Laconia, basically I'll kick you all out, right, I'll conquer you. And the E4s famously reply, if, right? So that's an example of that Spartan um, brevity or, or laconic phrase, okay? So that's kind of what we're looking at in this story. So before we dive too far into it, like I always tell you, I'll read you um, the story aloud in Latin. Not that my pronunciation is anything fantastic, but it's just something to give you a chance to hear it if you don't have anyone to read with. But if you're a student, I would probably recommend that you find a, a classmate, um, someone that you could read the story to, have them read it back to you. This way you're working on your speaking and your pronunciation when it's your turn, and also you're listening um, when you hear the story back. That's always a great way to learn Latin. You never want to shut those off. The other thing I might recommend you do is doing a quick pre-read just to get the vocab. Um, it's really hard to understand what's going on if you just don't know what the words mean. So just look through the story if you need to. Any words you're not sure of, just look them up in a dictionary. There's a million good ones out there. Um, a lot of them are online. They're fast. They're easy. And it'll just help you understand what's going on. Okay. The last thing I would tell you to do, if you are actually trying to dive in and get a really good translation on this, try the read and reread method. Um, for these, the, these stories are really short, so you don't necessarily need to do that. Um, but if you're looking to really kind of advance your Latin, I'd always recommend um, read through the story once, write down any problems you have, look them up, and then repeat the process, right? Read it two, three, as many times as you need to, and you're trying to hit a point where you can read through this entire story start to finish without needing any help. That's how you know you're in a really good spot and you're ready to move on, okay? So if you haven't done that, pause the video, go do it. Otherwise, let's dive in. So the story looks like this. It goes, Sam i olim, a polycrate expulsi spartam venerum. Introducti apur eforos, multa fecerunt verba opem orantes. At ili responderunt, priora verba obliti sumus, posteriora non intelegimus. Post haec iterum introducti, sacum ferentes nihil alio dixerunt, nisi haec verba, sacus fumento ege. He spartani responderunt, nunc intelegimus, Open wobis praestabimus. There we go. Okay, so pause the video if you need to, right? Go back, do what you have to do. But again, instead of listening to me, um, try to find someone you can in class to work on. It's always a better option. But if all else fails, at least you have mind to hear the story one time. Okay, so now if you haven't read it, go read it, uh, go read it rather. Otherwise, we'll take it one line at a time and I'll explain it to you. Okay. So the story starts like this again. You have Sami. Those are the Samians, right? And just if you're not sure, the, the Samians are from um, an island of, of Samos, right? Which is way to the eastern part of the Aegean Sea. It's right up against the, the coast of modern day Turkey. So you want to remember um, back in this time period, right? Um, I guess we'd be talking somewhere around the 6th century, probably BCE. Um, Greece had really expanded onto that, um, that coast of modern day Turkey. There's a lot of heavy Greek influence there. So that's who the Sami are, right? The Samians. So the, once, right, only once upon a time, right? The Samians, having been um, expelled by Polycrates, came to Sparta, 
right? So Polycrates, by the way, is um, a famous tyrant, and he's a 6th century BC tyrant, right? So you can look him up, um, but he, he took over the island of Samos, right? So the, the Samians, or at least some of them, they come to the Spartans looking for help, okay? Then you have the next line, right? Introducti. So having been um, brought before them, or you could say introduced, I guess that would kind of work too, but brought before um, the, the ephors, right? Ephoros. The ephors, by the way, are kind of the, the councils, almost like the leaders of um, Sparta, even though they have kings, right? This is the old, the old men who kind of rule over things. So having been introduced among the ephors or brought before the ephors, um, they they made literally, multa, werba, fekera, they made many words, right? Meaning the, the same. And so they said a lot of things. So they're just speaking and going on and on and on and their orantes open they're begging for help or asking for help but they're talking a lot right saying a lot of things as they as they ask for help and now here comes the spartan response right so you have a ili respondera right but them or they meaning the spartans they responded and they said um priora verba obliti sumus we have forgotten your first words the priora verba right obliti there by the way is a deponent right so we have forgotten um your first words and then it's non intelligimus right and we don't understand and posterior, your last words. So this is their famous kind of like bored statement. They're listening to this, these uh, Samians go on and on and on. They're like, you got to start again. We have no idea what you said right in the beginning. And we don't understand what you're saying now. You're using too many words. Okay. Yes. Yeah, a Spartan brevity. Then you have uh, post hike iterum introducti, sacum ferentes nihil alio dixerum. So you have after these things, right, or after um, this, right, after this this is done, um, being introduced again, right, so they try again, iterum introducti, um, carrying a, a sacum, like a bag, a sack, right, so carrying a, a, a sack, they said nothing else, right, nihil dixerum, they said nothing else, nisi hike verba, except for these words. So they try it again, and they just hold up a sack, and they say, sacus frumento eget right? The sack lacks corn or is lacking corn. Fermento, by the way, doesn't mean like actual corn on the cob, it means like food, right? They're asking for food is kind of what it is, okay? So they shorten it down to one quick phrase. Then you have um, the response, the last line, you have his Spartani respondero, nunc intel, uh, intelligimus, open wobis prestabimus. So they say um, the Spartans responded um, to these words, right, to this. They finally respond. They say nunc intelligimus, right, now we understand. And they say prestabimus, we will um, provide to you, for you, wobis, we'll provide for you help, open, right? So they say, got it, now we understand what you're asking for, and we'll give you help. And now they have their agreement and they're ready to move on, Okay. So again, this chapter is called Spartan Brevity because it's showing the idea of that laconic phrase. Using too many words, talking too much, the Spartans are like, you got you to start again. We're bored. We have no idea what you're saying. Short and sweet. We need food. Got it. Understood. Here's some food to help you. Okay. So again, just a fun little story to give you a hint at um, the Spartans. I'd highly encourage you to look them up, by the way. The laconic phrases are something you could um, find some really good resources on online, right? It's not too much digging. You'll be able to see a bunch of examples, but look it up, have some fun. Hopefully it gives you, uh, you know, a little insight into Spartans. But more than that, it's just a fun little story to practice more Latin, something you probably haven't seen before, and just break out of your traditional textbook. So if you have any questions at all or anything um, you don't understand, put it in the comments below. I'm always happy to help you. Otherwise, use it as practice. Keep working through it. And once you're able to read this without any, um, any help, you know, start to finish, that's how you know you're in a good place and you're ready to move on. Good luck.